Welcome to Attic Raiders Retro Reviews, where today we're taking on a game that arachnophobes should possibly avoid. We're going to be looking at Incy Wincy Spider. Released by Waddington's in 1995, Incy Wincy Spider is based on the classic song or nursery rhyme of the same name. In Britain, of course, the song was known as Incy Wincy Spider, but in the US it was Itsy Bitsy Spider. The song is very old and can be traced back to at least 1910, when it was first published with much less child-friendly lyrics, The Blooming Bloody Spider. If we look at the box art on the Waddington's version, because this is aimed at children aged 5 plus, they've gone for very kind of cutesy, child-friendly drawings on here. It shows you nice and big what the actual gameplay looks like and you can see the actual game itself is a corker. This looks awesome. They've got the cute little spiders here and uh, really it's just the photograph of this game which is selling it and for me that's enough to sell it. On the back here we've then got a couple more photographs not really a lot in the way of art, but some nice photographs showing off those details. And this game is all about the details. When it comes to the theming and the artwork, they have gone all out. Let's take a closer look. The player pieces are these little spiders here, and you can see they've gone for cute little spiders since it is a kid's game, and they are holding their umbrellas. Now they're supposed to be four of these guys. Sadly, I am missing one which should have a green umbrella, but uh, I can still play with three players here. Um, you can see the umbrellas here are deliberately shaped this way so that it's got a hook on the end here so that it can hook into that spider web to crawl up the wall at the end of the game. There's no dice in this game, so instead we've got a spinner. On here we've got different numbers of spaces you can move, so you've got a maximum you could move is four spaces. As well as moving spaces, we've got some different symbols here. If you land on a spider web, then this means that you're trapped by a web and do not move. And that happens if you're on the game board. If, however, you're on the giant spider's web climbing up when you spin this, it means that you fall off of the web and have to start again. If you get a tap symbol, this means that you have to turn the tap until one water drop ball comes out. If you land on the welly boots here, that means that you have got to turn the tap 10 clicks. So potentially there's going to be quite a lot of water drop balls are going to come out of this. But on the other hand, it's also possible that none will come out at all. And the last space here is the sun. If you land on the sun here, it means that you can move one space forward and then spin again. The game board takes quite a while to put together, but there are step-by-step -step instructions which really help with this, and they're really clear to use. The game goes together really well, and there's lots of little slots in the actual board itself so that you can see where everything fits in nicely and the wall pieces slot in beautifully. It's really nice when it all comes together. The tap unit here is just a fantastic piece of design. Inside this tube here there is a spiral which when you turn the tap handle spins round and as that spins round it causes any of the water droplet balls which are inside here to move from the bottom up to the top and then eventually they will come out of the tap spout and then they will come eventually back into this collecting unit and back feed back in here and then it's ready to go again so it is self perpetuating it keeps going this is a ancient ancient piece of design this is an archimedes screw which was really came from ancient egypt where they used it in order to in their irrigation to move water from the river nile up into the fields for irrigation so this is thousands and thousands of years old this piece of design it is so nice and it's such a good use of this 
Once it's been put together, this thing is truly impressive. It is so tall and so wide that I'm actually finding it quite difficult to get the whole thing in camera shot here. From one side, it looks great, but to truly appreciate it, you have got to see it in full 360 degrees. It is very much in the mold of Ghost Castle, where you've got four different rooms that the board has been split into with divider walls and a big central plastic action unit. One that has a delivery system which delivers random dropping balls to set off traps, just like Ghost Castle. And just like Ghost Castle, the graphics department have really, really gone to town on the floors and the walls of this thing. The detail in this is spectacular. We begin our game here in the bathroom and look at the level of detail that has been put into this artwork. The radiators got rust on it here. We've got wallpaper peeling cracked exposed brickwork here. We've got rumpled towels left on the ground, splashes of water. Up here in the main kind of trap unit there is all kinds of things on the shelves. We've got, I don't know, um, it's like matey bubble bath. There's a hot water heater. We've got shavers. We've got rubber ducks. There is everything in here. This has got so much detail crammed, packed into it. Even underneath where the bath unit is, there's other detail. You can see that they've thought about it. They've got the carpet cut out around where the bath is. There is so much to look at here. Moving around, we go from the bathroom into the kitchen and the kitchen has got even more detail crammed into it, if you can believe it. We've got washing up liquid, there's plants, there's mops, rubber gloves, all kinds of things. Look, this cupboard on the wall here is absolutely falling apart, almost falling off its hinges. We've got washing up liquid and scrubbing brushes, tiles that have fallen off the wall, exposing grouting and uh, glue on there behind that. There's all kinds of things in here. Underneath here, the kitchen sink unit, you can see again, there's even exposed brickwork behind here, exposed wooden floors, holes in the wooden floor with piping underneath it. We've got the linoleum, which has been cut to shape around the cupboard. The linoleum is even wrinkled up here. There is so, so much detail in this thing. From the kitchen, we then move round into the bathroom with even more detail crammed in here. Towels, hot water pipes, cracks in the tiles around the toilet handle, peeling wallpaper up here, toilet rolls on the shelf, toothpaste, air fresheners. There is everything on here. They have put so much work into the artwork on here. Once we've moved through the bathroom, we then come outside into the garden. For me, this is probably, I think they need to fire the architect of whoever made this house. Because honestly, in order to get from the kitchen through the, back, through the toilet to get outside, who designs a house where you have to go through the toilet in order to get outside? It's not hygienic, it's not a good way of doing things, come on. And as somebody who lived in a student flat with a toilet right next door to the kitchen, then I know how unhygienic that can be. It is a recipe for disaster right there. But once we come from the bathroom, or the toilet rather, because there's no bath in here, but there is another bathroom which has no toilet in it. Once we come from the toilet, we come to the outside area, and again, there is so much more detail in here. Again, we've got 
hoses and bricks and taped up tap pipes, broken pipes here. There's all kinds of things going on. The game begins here in the bathroom with players starting on this blue spider symbol here. You then obviously spin the spinner and do whatever the thing that you land on indicates that you should do. As you move through the bathroom, you might land on one of these plug holes. If you land on a plug hole anywhere in the game board, you take one of these eight plug hole tokens. Now throughout the game, you can only hold a maximum of two plug hole tokens at any one time. If you've already got two plug hole tokens and you land on a plug hole symbol again, you can't take any more until you've used up one of them. Plug hole tokens, if you have them, mean that when you spin, if you land on a number, instead of moving that many spaces across the board, you could choose to play your plug hole token and use that up and instead turn the tap four clicks or three clicks or two clicks or one click, depending on which one you landed on. This is for the vindictive players. This is where you look out to see if your person that you're playing against is on one of the sink traps. If they're on a sink trap, then you might want to use your plug hole token in order to turn the tap and hope that they're going to get flipped off of there. What it does mean though is that players who are on one of the sink traps are much more likely to actually have that trap activated rather than just going on the randomness of the spinner and hoping that a tap or a flood symbol comes up. It means that you can use the symbol to influence the outcome of the game much more. And it means that the trap is going to be going off much more, making this much more interesting. Something else which helps with the traps being in play far more is that no matter how many you spin on the spinner, how many spaces you go, you always have to stop on a trap when you get there. So even if I was to spin a four on the spinner just now, and one, two, three, four, instead of getting to move four spaces, I would actually have to go one, two, three, and then stop, and that's the end of my go just now. This then gives other players far more chance to either spin up the tap or the flood or to play one of their own tokens. It means that unlike Ghost Castle, the traps are in play more and it makes the game more interesting. If the trap is activated by a water droplet, you have got to go back to the start. Each quadrant of the game board, however, has its own symbol. So instead of having to go all the way back to the start when you are flipped off of a trap, if I was flipped off of the trap here in the kitchen, instead of having to go right back to here to start again, I'm only going to go back to the start of this particular room. Once you've moved through the bathroom, you then obviously move through the kitchen here, across the sink, and then out into the next room, which is the bathroom here, or rather the toilet, because there's not actually a bath in here. And again, we move through the toilet to the outside. Once we are outside, we then have to move across here over the hose, which out of all the traps, I think is the least favourite of mine, most definitely, because this just kind of randomly floats here for no particular reason. All the rest of the traps make sense and are on top of something else. There's something below it, so it's not just floating in midair. This one just floats here. I suppose they maybe couldn't think of something, or maybe they thought that the production costs were already too high. But this would have been nice if maybe there was like a kennel out here, or a rabbit hutch that this hose was sitting on top of. Once you move through here and across to here, you're almost finished. Once we get to this point here, you then have to start climbing 
the wall in order to win. That's where these little hooks on the end of them come in handy so that they can then start moving up the wall in order to get up here. Now obviously at this point there are no traps in order to get you but remember if you roll or spin rather a web symbol while you're climbing up here it means that you fall off and have to go back and start again. Once you get up to the top to this final one here that is you won the game and it is all over. You can see that it's a really fun little game. I actually really like this thing. It's advertised as two to four players, but I think to really get the most out of this, you have to have at least three players. With two players, those traps don't come into play so much, and so it kind of really loses something there. Your spider gets flipped off of a hose, flipped off of a bath, flipped off of a hose, flipped off of a sink. There's no real variety in there to add spice to it and to really get the imagination going. If they change those traps up a bit, a bit more like a ghost castle, then it would have been much better, much more interesting, I think. But I do really like this. There is a problem with the traps though, in that if your spider does get flipped, sometimes it can land back inside the sink unit underneath the flipper and then it can be really hard to get out. If it's little kids playing this, they're gonna have real trouble getting the spider out of that sink unit without it getting caught. I can see kids breaking things quite a bit trying to get those spiders out. I do like though that the traps come into play quite a lot. They've thought of different mechanisms to try and use them more with having to stop on the traps no matter what you roll or with other players being able to play those plug hole tokens in order to use their movement to turn the tap instead. So it really is just nice. And the theming on this is great. The artwork on the walls and the floor, as I said before, is so detailed, they've put so much effort in. I like the tap, it's a great piece of design that they've used there in order to get those water droplet balls up and introduce a random selection method. And the fact that it's self-perpetuating, self-loading, and you don't have to load it back up once you've set it up at the beginning of the game is great. They've just, they've put so much effort into this. I just really, really like this. If you're in the UK, there's quite a few of these available on eBay. They tend to go for around the 15, 20 pound mark, but if you're willing to wait and hold out, you can get it quite a bit cheaper than that. Nice gameplay, but just for the pure design on this game, it is a definite one for the collection. I recommend it. Until next time, this is Attic Raiders Retro Reviews.